Hey guys, so the purpose of this video today is to answer a couple of questions. Now, I've had two people comment on my graduating video um, asking about the reason I was bullied. So I've decided to do this video to go through my story and my experiences with bullying. Um, yeah. So I've mostly dealt with idiots through kindergarten and junior school. They were the main reasons that I got very irritated as a kid. But on top of that, I guess, I didn't exactly understand myself as well. But I was different from all the other kids from the very get-go. Everyone could tell that I was different. And I could tell I was different, and my parents knew I was different. Mainly because I was very troublesome. And in turn, I had a short temper. So, yeah. Through junior school and through kinder, it was mostly idiots that irritated me. Um, I was very violent as a kid. And I think kids enjoyed getting a rise out of me. And even to this day, people do enjoy, get well, did enjoy getting a rise out of me. So, in junior school, I was very attention-seeking. And when you pair that with a short temper, basically any attention is good attention. And honestly, it was a lot of my attention was bad attention. But at the time, I didn't process that. Another thing which in junior school and probably through to my second round of year seven that I was made fun of was the fact that I couldn't tell reality from fiction. So I believed every TV show, every movie, every book was real. And obviously now that I'm older, I know full well a lot of the shit was fake. But I used to pretend that I was in these worlds, that they were real. And maybe that was because I just didn't like all the bullying and everything, that I just wanted to be good, that I wanted to be something real that people liked. And I wanted to fit in, but I never fit in. And then around year four, year five, I started to become interested in the paranormal. And when that got out at my school, that did spark some torment. I fully remember one day in being dared to do Bloody Mary in the girls' toilets at school, and I did it without even thinking because attention seeking. And I remember that there were kids who had turned off the lights, that I had my back up against the door so no one could get in because I was freaking out because of what these kids were doing. And I remember running out onto the oval and I think I tripped or I just collapsed. Not like fainted collapsed, but curled up collapsed, which I would call a shutdown these days. And there were these boys who surrounded me putting their jumpers over their faces. And so that's something that I had to deal with. They didn't tease me a lot, but when they did, it was very cruel. Um, and because I had a short temper, obviously everyone loved to see how quickly they could get under my skin, how quickly they could get a reaction or see if they can get away. So I dealt with that all through junior school. When I moved to my second school, um, I learned something that 
I learned very early on about fake friends and fake people. And just because you're in school, teachers aren't necessarily going to give two shits. Again, I still had the temper. But I tried to disconnect a little bit. But I, I didn't like being the, atten in the center of attention so much anymore. But I still did. Well, in year six, I still did. And throughout my two years, whenever I got the opportunity, I would sing in class. And I'm pretty sure I had a lot of people make fun of me of that. Um, I used to try to one-up everyone at, at the time. And looking back at that, that isn't right to try and one-up people all the time. I've actually had people do it to me and it's not right. Um, I tried to be the best, but I wasn't. I wasn't sporty. I wasn't, you know, very academic. And people made fun of me a lot. But when 2009 rolled around, my first round of year seven, this is when everything really changed. 2009, I was sexually harassed, like pretty much every day. And about two weeks after it started, I got diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. And the school pretty much refused to accept the diagnosis and I couldn't tell anyone what was going on now every day I was fighting every single fucking day and this is when I really learned who my real friends were and I had none because I remember one day coming out from checking for my singing lesson time and it was just before class started and the boys started again. Massive circle around me. And they were one of my friends. I later found out after coming back from suspension that the, these two boys actually just hung out with me because they felt sorry for me. They felt sorry for me. But at least they ended up telling me. There are so many fake friends there that I can't even label them all. I had so many. I will never forget my 13th birthday. That I had invited over 30 people. And out of that 30, five came. Only three of them were from school. And two of them I went to my previous school with. And there were a lot of rumors going around about me at that time as well. And when I tried telling the teachers what was going on, they didn't listen. They didn't want to listen. So eventually my parents got involved after finding out. And all the boys, and this isn't just year sevens or year eight boys. This went from year eight to year 12. And even if there were boys who didn't try anything, they spread rumors about me. There's one rumor, which I'm never going to forget. My sister had come home uh, while I was on suspension. And I was on suspension for something I didn't do. And they had surveillance to prove I didn't do it. They said I punched a year five girl in the face, and I didn't. See, even the teachers wanted me out. But my sister came home and said to me, there's a year 12 boy going around saying that he fucked you and got you pregnant. I'm never going to forget that. There were people going around saying that I'd given them blowjobs, that they'd fucked me and all that. A year seven, who every day had to fight, was dealing with rumours. After coming back, after term break, for the fourth term, that was my last term. Whether my parents could have found a new school for me or not, I was not going back there the next year. No fucking way in hell. So then I got to... My new school, which is the one I've graduated. And yes, I was still bullied. Some people actually knew the kids who were teasing me and obviously rumours spread like wildfire about me. But I tried so hard to disconnect. But I wanted to be accepted. I didn't want the shit anymore. 
I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to be normal. But that just wasn't me. So I still got shit every day. Whether it be interested in the paranormal or because I was different or just because I had a temper. And I remember in year seven or year eight, there was this group of girls who actually teased me because I was a virgin and I wasn't interested in sex at all. And they were trying to peer pressure me into doing stuff. And I was like, not with them, but I guess so they had real shit to spread about me. And in year nine, this was when I psychologically fell over and I self-harmed a lot. Um, I don't really know why I psychologically fell over. It was probably just the exhaustion over the last, that was over the last four or five years that, that finally got to me. Um, and I remember there was a point and this now, I gained a lot of weight between 2010 and 2012. And so I was nearly, I broke the 100 mark when I was in year nine, the 100 kilo mark. And I got teased for being fat on top of everything else. And I remember coming to school with the tips of my hair dyed blue. And I remember... Because it had turned green, there were these kids who said, oh, look, her hair's gone moldy. So at lunchtime that day, I went to the girls' toilets and chopped off all the blue. And I had to put up with various shit like that all year. And then up until the op shop formal, where I wore a dress which showed off the girls a little bit, and then the bullying suddenly started to go down a little bit. Figures. Year 10... People started to back off a lot, but this same group of idiots who commented about my hair that I've been dealing with since year seven, they made mockeries of me because I happened to be interested in Wicca and magic, and they used to mock me a lot for it. And then that year I disconnected. I had my music in all the time, and from then on at school, I basically never didn't have my music in. Even for tests, which I shouldn't have done, but I still managed. Ha <laughs> ha, smart me. But yeah, so it's just been little things over the years. But however, in year 10, I started catching the train to school. And my reasoning for that was because on the bus, I had a bunch of people bullying me and teasing me and abusing me. Like I had people throw shit at my head. I had people you know, bug me. I had people actually, I fell asleep on the bus a few times and I actually had once these assholes draw a dick on my face. So really any of the serious bullying that I had was on the train now, but it was never really so severe, but it was the same group of assholes. And this is the group of assholes who said to me last year that no one loved me, that it would be better off if I died, that basically I was worthless. If they knew half the shit I'd been through, do you seriously think they would have said that? I hope not. But last year I snapped. I really snapped. And if anything, this event shows how far I've come with my anger management. Basically, I will never forget this song that they sung. And when I snapped, they made this little shit made me look like the bad guy. When he said that, I had the option to lash out at him. But instead, I scratched myself. I went for my hands and I've got scars on the back of my hands now. Because of that. And I hate them. But if anything, these scars show me how far I've come now. So, yeah. That's my story. That's my hell. I'll see you guys in my next video.